you about the absolute worst experience of my life. It was so bad that I honestly don't want anyone to ever go through something similar. I ended up in an all-boys prison. As you might have noticed, I'm a girl, so my stay there was horrible, even worse than a normal stay in the joint. If I had simply understood how terrible life could get for me if I broke the law, I wouldn't have needed to learn this terrible lesson to straighten up my act. Back when I was younger, I was really messed up. I'm not trying to make excuses for myself, but I was kind of following the example of everyone else in my life. The truth of the matter is, my family was kind of messed up. I never knew my dad since he got sent to prison when I was in my mom's womb. And mom wasn't that good to begin with either. She was always getting in trouble and got sent to jail a few times. It was only short stints and she'd come back after a few months. During those weeks, I'd stay with my uncle or aunts. You can bet they weren't any better though. They were just good at not getting caught. My uncle Lenny sold all kinds of pills, and not the ones you can get at the pharmacy. Aunt Lucy hung out with folks who really weren't nice at all and got into fights all the time. My cousins were just as messed up. I had no positive role models in my life. My friends were also kind of bad influences. We got in all kinds of trouble and tried to pull pranks on the cops. You can imagine how badly that always ended up. I wish that I had someone to teach me how to behave properly and how bad life could go if you were a criminal. But back then, being a criminal sounded so cool, and it seemed like the only way I could ever earn any real money. I thought an honest day job was only good for fools that didn't know better, so I would laugh and mock any friends that got a real job. I told them that they could go be modern slaves and I would spend my time chilling out and claiming what I wanted. Who was going to stop me from doing what I wanted? I knew how to steal from my family, after all. What I learned from them was never to get caught and not to be a snitch. If I ever got into trouble, I had to keep my mouth shut and not make other people fall with me. Out there, it was every man and every woman for themselves. And that was exactly what landed me in prison. All the friends who messed up alongside me managed to escape punishment. Perhaps I should have told on them because their lives have gotten far worse ever since. They didn't learn any lesson and continued with the kinds of mistakes we committed when we were younger. I hope they don't end up hurting someone in the process. The thing is, I had plenty of warning before my stint in prison, but I was too blinded by my youth and all the bad influences of my life to understand how reckless I was being. I got in trouble all the time at school and got sent to detention every single week. My mom didn't quite know how to deal with me, but to be fair, she also had a criminal record, so it was hard for her to tell me to behave properly when she messed up all the time. My first big brush with the law came when I was 15 years old. One of my cousins dared me to steal from the grocery store around the corner from our home. I was so eager to show that I was cool that I agreed. Of course, I got caught and the owner called the cops. He had a zero tolerance policy when it came to kids stealing in his store. That was the reason why he was so rarely a target of petty theft. I didn't know that and ended up getting in real trouble. Of course, when I was asked if anyone helped me or knew about the robbery, I shook my head no. I thought I was so cool, not snitching on my cousin. I felt like a badass. The judge wasn't impressed and sent me to five months in juvie. I thought it would be a walk in the park. It wasn't that easy, sure, but knowing what I know now, well, I wish I had taken advantage of that opportunity. Because jail was horrible, and if I had learned my lesson in juvie, I wouldn't have been forced to endure that punishment. One day, back when I was 20, I was hanging out with a few friends. We were kind of bored, and that was never good when it came to us. After all, that was when we got into the most trouble. We thought it was a great idea to go around the neighborhood and checking everyone's front doors. Then we could steal all the packages left behind for them. It was the middle of the day, so there already had been lots of deliveries, but most folks weren't home. It seemed like the most brilliant idea ever. We would be getting lots of things for free, and whatever we didn't want, we could just sell online. That would give us money to buy anything we needed instead. Plus, I would be able to show off to my family and let all my more honest friends see how cool it was to steal instead of working like fools. So we went around the neighborhood and ended the day with my room filled with packages of all sizes and shapes. 
It was the coolest day ever. Or so we thought until the next morning. I woke up to my mom asking what I had done. I played innocent and told her I hadn't gotten myself into any trouble at all. She asked me why the police were at our front door asking for me. I gulped and walked outside to talk to them. I was so confused. After all, I had stolen all those boxes in the middle of the day and no one had seen us. How did they know it had been me and my friends? They immediately told me I was under arrest. They had proof that I had been one of the perpetrators. There were video recordings. Apparently, several of our neighbors had gotten tired of the crimes going on in the area. They had invested in some cameras, and I was the only one in the group whose face was visible. The prosecutor came to talk to me while I was in custody. She told me that if I told her who else had helped me steal those packages, she would cut me a deal. I now wish I had accepted her offer. Instead, I decided the honorable thing to do was to keep my mouth shut. So my case went to trial. I couldn't believe that I could actually end up in jail over just a few boxes. They didn't even have really cool stuff in them, just a bit of clothing, some videos, and random stuff. No cell phones or video game consoles or nothing of the sort. Plus, I had to give everything back, so it wasn't as if I ended up any richer. A public defender was assigned to my case, but he didn't do a very good job. Matter of fact, I don't think he really tried at all. The trial lasted less than a couple of weeks. I had been bailed out by my mom, but I knew my freedom would be short-lived. I talked to my friends, and they asked me if I was going to rat them out. I promised I wouldn't, and they were really relieved. I wish I had been smarter than that. We all messed up and could have gotten off with a slap on the wrist if we all faced the music together. Instead, I was sentenced to two years in prison. The judge told me he wished this would set me straight, and that was it. I was going to lose two entire years of my life. When I was transferred to the prison, I thought my situation couldn't possibly get worse. I was in for a big surprise. I soon noticed that there were only guys around, no girl in sight. I mean, even most of the guards were men. I asked myself what was going on. Maybe I was going to be taken to the girl's side of the building soon? I ended up realizing that I was there to stay, and there really were no other women around. I asked the guards around me, and I was shocked by their response. They seemed surprised my lawyer hadn't told me about it. Apparently, the female prison was full, and I was going to have to serve my time in a male jail. Imagine my surprise! I was terrified and furious all at the same time. I tried to act tough and pretend that I was simply annoyed. Deep down, I was truly scared. This seemed like the beginning of a horror story. I tried to request that they send me to any other prison, but nothing worked. My lawyer wasn't interested in my case any longer, and the judge didn't assign me anyone new. The prison's authorities told me they'd keep an eye out to avoid any man getting frisky with me, but that was it. I was going to have to spend the following two years locked up alongside nothing but men. Dangerous men, for that matter. The first couple of weeks were pure hell. I couldn't stop looking over my shoulder. Everyone stared at me whenever I got out of my cell. The only benefit I got was that I could sleep in my own personal room. After all, they couldn't lock me up every night next to some guy. It would be too risky. But that privacy didn't help me when I was in any of the common rooms. Everywhere I went, creepy guys stared at me constantly. Everyone tried to hit on me, and they would never understand when I told them to leave me alone. I couldn't even take a shower without several guys staring at me. I wanted to cry all the time, but if I showed any weakness, it would all be worse, so I had to toughen up and pretend that nothing affected me. Within a couple of months, things slowly started to calm down. Not much, but it wasn't as intense as those initial weeks. The guys around the prison kind of got used to having me around and also the extra security that hung out nearby whenever I was outside my cell. I got a bit less attention, but it was never easy. I felt constantly threatened, and some guys tried to actually grab me a few times. Fortunately, nothing really bad happened to me, but there were a few close calls. I was terrified and couldn't sleep well at night. I lost so much weight due to stress. The truth of the matter is, after my first year in prison, things began to get better. I managed to make several friends, and I would hang out with them when we were allowed out of our cells. They also defended me when anyone new tried to mess with me. That was a big relief, believe me. I finished out my sentence and was so relieved to finally get out of that terrible place. Those two years felt like five, I have to tell you. 
The second I got my life back, I swore to myself that I'd never ever do anything illegal again. I definitely learned my lesson and never want to go through anything like that again. I cut ties with all my former friends and even my family and got myself a decent job. I am doing much better and hope to lead a happy life, leaving behind my terrible past. Thanks for watching. Have you ever done something you regretted soon after? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and 